Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is my first ever uh, vlog, so welcome to the first of many. Um, I've got a lot of great vlogs coming up, uh, one of which is how to make your Mac Pro twice as fast at no expense. Uh, a little trick and a secret I came across through just my testing, and you won't believe it until you see it. Uh, twice as fast. All your stabilization, your optical flow analysis, uh, your rendering in the timeline, literally twice as fast. Uh, I'm thrilled to know about it. Having said that, uh, this review is about the MacBook Pro. Uh, my work is actually changing to where I'm more mobile. Um, I'm going to Africa quite a bit to do some filming there. I film for a lot of charities. So my question was, can the new MacBook Pro come anywhere near the Mac Pro? Mac Pro is three years old. How much is the technology, the faster RAM, uh, the, big, the health, healthier GPU, how much can it come close to the Mac Pro? I have the 10 core Mac Pro, which actually I spec'd out myself. I put the chip in myself. It's been great for three years, and I can do a review about that. Um, 3.0 gigahertz, 10 cores, uh, tons of RAM, uh, SSD, a big fat RAID um, on Thunderbolt 2. The thing flies, uh, and it's a dual D700. I've seen a lot of reviews about the MacBook Pro compared to the old one. Uh, compared to the iMac, but to me and to a lot of video editors out there, I think there's still a question being raised, can it be a desktop replacement? And I can say in a nutshell quickly that uh, I was this close to taking it back um, because in all my testing, is, in a summary, it's about three to four times slower than the Mac Pro using Final Cut. This is all I'm going to be reviewing is the Final Cut because that's what I am in every day. Um, three to four times slower on optical flow, stabilization, rendering on the timeline, exporting, transcoding to proxy, uh, literally three to four times slower. Having said that, when you convert things to proxy, um, something interesting happens. Whereas the Mac Pro might take 80% of its power to do some of the tests I just talked about uh, on normal 4K media. I shoot black magic, I shoot 4K and ProRes um, HQ, some raw. Uh, where that will take 80-90% of its power to do some things, when you throw proxy media at it, it cuts its performance in half. It gives you the same amount of time, but uses less resources. Yet when you use proxy on the MacBook Pro, it still uses 80-90% to of its resources and actually catches up pretty close in some uh, tests to the Mac Pro. So it's interesting the way a laptop will say, here's proxy, I'm still going to give the maximum power, and the Mac Pro will say, here's proxy, I'll use half my power and leave it in reserve for other things. Not sure why that is. Um, it's kind of a shame, really. But anyway, uh, I'll just give you some quick numbers quickly. Um, like I said, 4K Media ProRes HQ on a 4K timeline, stabilizing all the clips, maybe a handful of 15 clips. Uh, the Mac Pro ran about 1,400% out of 2,000 th um, because it's 10 cores, theoretically 20 cores. So 1400%, 146 degrees. Fan was audible at its maximum 1900 RPM. The time was 13 minutes, 50 seconds. MacBook Pro ran about four to 600%, which is close to its optimum uh, ability. 141 degrees, totally silent at 2500 RPM. The time was nearly triple at 32, 39. So you can see it's really struggling, but it's a quick machine and a quiet machine, which I like. Um, but on proxy, it was 21, 28. Uh, so it's still doubly slow, nearly double as slow as the Mac Pro, but there's some difference there. And proxy to me is something that could be prepared the night before. Um, a lot of my media projects I'll copy down to the big raid the night before. I might drag a whole bunch of clips into the timeline, hit stabilize on all of it and go to bed and make the thing sweat. Uh, that way when I come in the morning, everything's ready. I'm not waiting for stabilization and optical flows, it's ready. So to me, to convert it to proxy because I have a laptop now would not be a, a detrimental step. Uh, optical flow on a 4K timeline. The Mac Pro ran at 130% and the fan was around 800 RPM, took three minutes and one second. The MacBook Pro ran about 130% also, so really scaled down its performance for optical flow. I, I imagine that's a different kind of process. Uh, 143 degrees, again, totally silent, 2500 RPM fan speed. 13 minutes and 32, so three to four times slower than the Mac Pro. Proxy, though, went down to three minutes and 47, so it came very close to being near the finish line with the Mac Pro. That's impressive to me. Uh, again, because you remember the way the Mac Pro handles proxy, it doesn't double its performance, it just scales back its reserves. Uh, rendering in timeline, so I color graded it, sharpened it, stabilized it, vignettes, slow motion, optical flow, all that's applied, the clips are on the timeline, ready to be rendered. 
The Mac Pro ran at about a thousand percent, so half its capacity, 127 degrees, 800 RPM, time was 1 minute 37 seconds. MacBook Pro ran about 400%, about 60-70% of its capacity, 139 degrees, totally silent, 2600 RPM time, 10 minutes and 12 seconds, so very, very slow compared to the Mac Pro. And on proxy, it came 4 minutes, so acceptable to be on the road, but not blazing like this thing. Uh, to create proxy media, the Mac Pro ran about 1400% at 146 degrees. The fan was audible at 1900 RPM, and the time was 1 minute 57 seconds. The MacBook Pro ran about 4 to 600% at 141 degrees, very light fan noise at 3800 RPM fan speed. The time was 6 minutes and 14 seconds, so again, 3 to 4 times slower. Now, I literally printed out my return label and said, you know what, I just can't deal with that. I'm a horsepower kind of guy, I love maximum bandwidth, pipeline is what I'm all about. I want to get through my 4K RAW as quick as I can. Um, but the thing that made me finally hold on to it was the playback ability. I could throw real 4K, not proxy, on the timeline. I could color grade it, sharpen it, stabilize it, vignette it, slow motion it, and it would play back with transitions beautifully, frame by frame, 30 frames a second. Uh, that to me is a win. Because a lot of my time and a lot of reason I try to have the maximum amount of power when I'm editing uh, these short trailers and short films that I do, I literally need it frame by frame to the second to the music to know that everything was smooth and the stabilization worked properly um, and just every frame matches what I'm doing. Uh, so I sometimes, or I very often render my timeline out because sometimes it won't play it back in real time. Um, this is playing it back in real time. So the fact it can power two 5K monitors in beautiful color and play back the media I'm working on in real time to me is a win. I can do the rendering, the exporting later when I'm done with the project as long as I can check it in real time, I don't need to render it out. That to me is a, a prize uh, and a real gift from this machine. So because I can do that when I'm done, when I'm going for dinner, you know, and it's overnight. I can, there's a lot of things I can do overnight. Um, so what really matters to me is real time playback. And that actually really did a good job in real time playback. I never saw a glitch in it. So that's kind of the summary of this review. Um, I just wanted to talk about the MacBook Pro. I mean, there's other things about the touch bar, which is not a gimmick. Um, there's other things you can see a lot of other reviews, but I've never found one that kind of compares this machine to a top spec Mac Pro. Hey, thanks for watching. I uh, hope this has been helpful for you. We plan to do some other blogs about how to make your Mac Pro twice as fast. We're going to be doing some drone purchases pretty soon or next week. Um, there's a lot more blogs I want to do. I've been making money in the film industry for over 20 years, so I feel it's time to give back and tips and tricks and just any questions you have or you'd like me to do a vlog on, let me know. Um, so thanks, for, you know, hit subscribe, hit like, whatever the deal is. This is all new to me, but I uh, just wanted to see if I could create a page where we give back and uh, see if we can create uh, some good rapport with the community out there. So thanks again.